The Infinix Note 10 Pro is a beautiful and affordable device. It costs about $235. Considering the price of the Galaxy A52 and Redmi Note 10 Pro, it's very easy to prefer buying the Infinix Note 10 Pro. But this video is not just about telling you to buy the device because it's cheaper. I mean, buyers also have to put value for money into consideration. Today, the inside man from Tekra will be taking you on a value evaluation journey for the Infinix Note 10 Pro. Is it worth buying? What level of performance can you expect from this device? Well, this teardown video and inside the review will provide answers to these questions and many more. As we take the first step of this value evaluation journey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on post notification. The first reason why this phone is worth buying is the build material. The back material of this device is plastic back and it's rough. This makes it firm to hold and those annoying fingerprint retention are not so noticeable. Holding and bending the plastic back shows that it's pretty tough. Why too much bend can actually cause serious damage, but this plastic back will survive numbers of falls. That is not all. The plastic back is also scratch resistant. I tried to leave a mark with my screwdriver, but nothing happened. This does not mean a knife won't cut deep, but materials such as keys won't leave unpleasant marks in the back of the plastic. Truth is, the device might not be perfect, but so far, as far as reliability goes, it's checking the boxes. Removing the screws makes it possible for the plastic frame to come off. And for some reasons known to Infinix alone, they decided to hide a screw beneath the camera module. Now I have to go through the stress of removing the camera module for me to get access to that screw. No thanks to Infinix. But with the last screw underneath the camera module removed, the frame cannot come off completely. It's lightweighted. And from what I can see, if you hold this frame together and press both sides together, it's very possible that you will break the frame. Well, what do you expect? It's plastic. If you've been watching my videos, then you might have seen lots of side-mounted fingerprints. But if you are new here, then hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so that you won't miss out on future updates. Meanwhile, I'll be looking to the Galaxy 52 and Redmi Note 10 Pro teardown video in the description. Do well to check it out. Now, the bottom board plays host to the main speaker and it's held by two more screws. The bottom speaker, the sound quality from it is very nice. Um, you know what? I will just talk more about audio when I get to the top speaker, which is the secondary speaker for this device. Now, it's time to remove the bottom board that has the USB Type C and 3.5 mm jack attached to it. There is a ribbon cable attached to it, the network cable, and there is one more screw I have to remove. With this off, I can now show you a closer look at what the board really looks like. Although there's a water indicator, this phone is nowhere near being water resistant. I think it should have come with a warning, keep away from water. If you are wondering what that round black stuff is, well, that is the vibrator model. That piece of equipment or the component of the device is responsible for the vibration of the phone. In the battery segment, you get 5000 mAh battery with 33 watt fast charge. This our value for money is gradually taking us towards the battery and I don't know if I already told you guys but this device is has 6.95 inch display and a 5000 mAh battery but man the device is lightweighted. One would have expected a device of this size to be heavier. Uh, you know taking out the battery I'll have to use the put tabs but put tabs have not always been friendly with me which is why mo in most of my videos I use my tools to pry out the battery. Sometimes it hurts the feelings of the battery, but I can only apologize when it's done. One of the reasons why the phone is lightweighted is the battery. From what you can see, the battery is very flat, it's not bumpy. This means no thick materials is required to cover it. And this also reduces the thickness of, this, of the phone. And that reflects in the overall weight of the device because the thicker the component of the device, the more heavier it becomes. Yeah, you know, as the phone comes with a MediaTek Helio G95 chipset, I'm more concerned about the heat management and cooling system for the battery itself. So, I'll talk more about the thinness of the battery later. Usually, when playing games, most phones tend to get very hot. Not warm, but hot. There is a difference between a device being hot and being warm. Below the battery is a graphite tape. From the inside reviews and takedown videos of smartphones that we've done in this channel so far, Smartphone companies have been using two types of 
heat conducting materials graphite and copper copper is the better heat conductor but graphite is not bad either so having a graphite beneath the battery is okay from the observation the phone will get warm during excessive usage but thanks to the 33 watt fast charge you don't necessarily have to plug and use the device as you can quickly charge the battery now that we know that the battery has good heat management let's now attention to the materials at the top board as expected the chipset is resting on a thermal paste pink they say is the ladies color maybe this phone is designed for ladies just kidding this phone is for me and Femi. Having thermal paste is good, but I wish the processor had come with the copper at the top. It would have made complete sense. In the camera segment, the 64 megapixel camera is nice. It does not have OIS, but it can take good photos both in daytime and nighttime. Other cameras at the back include 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel depth sensor, 2 megapixel macro. Up front, a 16 megapixel selfie camera and it's pretty nice too. The camera of this phone can record 4K video, and if you are a vlogger, you'll find it very useful. You also get features such as steady video modes, portrait, etc. when using the camera. Using the gaming Helio G95 chipset is a nice one. From the Geekbench test, the Helio G95 is better than the Snapdragon 720 used in the Galaxy A52. At the top is the secondary speaker of this device. As far as sound qualities goes, you can't complain. Both the top and bottom speakers play sounds, although the bottom speaker is louder. But overall, the sound quality you get with this device is pleasant. This is what the inside of the Infinix Note 10 Pro looks like, with one more important component missing, the Infinix S Pen. I think reducing the battery width a little would have made it possible for the device to accommodate the S Pen. Or maybe adding one more inch to the width of the device would have made this possible too. And man, it would have completely completed the phone. I mean, a note is not really a note without its pen, right? It's been more than 4 years since we last saw an Infinix phone that has an S Pen. Maybe you guys should start the bring back S Pen hashtag on Twitter. Who knows, Infinix might bring it back. The value evaluation journey is gradually coming to an end. But let's do a quick recap of the journey to help your purchase decision. Most phones in same category with Infinix Note 10 Pro are at least $30 more expensive. But this device managed to offer better build material nice display with 90 years refresh rate, good battery cooling system, a tight 3 watt fast charge, a powerful MediaTek Helio G chipset with good cameras including nice nice mode features. If you ask me, I'd say the Infinix Note 10 Pro offers good value for money. The possible downside is that Infinix is not promising any software updates. This means you are likely stuck with Android 11 forever. Everything else about this device is good to go. Alright guys, that is it for the teardown video of the Infinix Note 10 Pro and inside review. I hope it will help you make a better purchase. If you are looking for the best budget phone to buy right now, this is definitely your choice. And also remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications if you haven't done so already. It's me, the inside man, and I'll see you around in my next one. Bye for now.